Hello, my name is Patrick Boo. I'm the Portfolio Manager for our Cybersecurity Services in ABB Process Automation. Hi, and my name is Tobias Nietzsche. I'm the Cybersecurity Practice Lead um, and also in our Energy Division. And um, we're going to talk about NIST 2. Uh, Tobias is our local expert on the subject and he's going to help us understand what is covered and what one should do about it. And let's start with the Article 21 of NIST, uh, NIST 2, which is the one of the main sections on things you should do to secure yourself. Tell us a little bit about it, Tobias. Yeah, so first of all, uh, why do we have NIST 2, I would say? And uh, as you mentioned, I'm the local expert. Uh, the local expert means I'm the European, so. <laughs> <laughs> and the cybersecurity expert. Um, NIST 2 requires member states to adopt and enforce stricter cybersecurity regulations. So the reason for that mainly is to um, limit uh, the or better control the impact uh, of an incident to uh, or societal and economic impact of an, uh, of an um, event that could happen in the European Union. So it's it's mainly about protecting the life of of the European population to make sure that they get the goods and services and electricity and so on. Life, the economic impact also. So yeah, correct. Okay. And and how is this different from NIS, the original one? Yeah, sure. So yeah, the intent, I guess, was the same. Uh, the implementation was different. So NIST 1 was mainly focusing on the critical infrastructure sectors only. Now we also have uh, a much broader scope. So there are uh, other, uh, is, um, uh, let's say, important um, entities included or industries included. And also we, the NIST 2 has, um, let's say, the intent to look into the supply chain so it secures not only or it does not only focus on the industry itself but also to the suppliers to that industry and then there is also a threshold remove so the before in this two the member states could define more or less who is in and out um, now this is covered or streamlined over the uh, members Okay, so it's it's just a better model, model, and it aims to protect the citizen, and by forcing um, operators to do cybersecurity and ensure that they can keep production running or restart rather quickly. Yeah, and one of the main uh, implementations also is that it lists um, risk management measures that essential and important entities of member states should implement. So there is like a, a list of minimum you need to apply. So you, that is then what we will present in the follow-up um, videos in more detail. All right. And and when we talk about it here from, from ABB and our cybersecurity services, we are focusing on the industrial systems. Uh, but this would also apply to IT and even uh, third-party suppliers. Yeah, absolutely. So the NIS 2 is not an uh, OT-related um, directive. It is overall. So it it is an it is covering the let's say complete company where uh, it is also enterprise IT, but for sure also the OT. So it is also on the opposite. It's not enough to fulfill the requirements only on your enterprise network and not in the OT. So you need to have a holistic view on the topic. All right. So so when we cover the following 10 uh, sub articles here or paragraphs, we will mainly be talking about industrial systems, but essentially it is also IT centric. Yeah, especially when you look into the offerings that we will map to some of these points, you will find out that we have uh, a lot of offerings that interact or integrate with the IT. So either they get information from there or they provide information uh, to the IT system. That could be, um, name it, a CM solution that gets information from the process, uh, things like that. All right. So thank you very much, Tobias. And 
when we meet again, we talk about the first article then. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.